friends, this video on electromagnetic waves part 4 is brought to you by examfear.com. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos till part 3 before going ahead with part 4. Let us quickly discuss a few points about the displacement current. So because displacement current is something which is newly introduced to you, right? So you are learning about displacement current for the first time. So now let us quickly discuss displacement current. Now, if you consider this capacitor, because if I take the example of this capacitor, you will understand it at its best because this is the example where the ampere circuit law failed, right? So now in this case, when you look at outside the plates, you have the current which is conduction current because it is due to the movement of the charges. Now, when you look at the area between the plates, you have the current that is displacement current. Now the displacement currents physical effects I mean when I talk about the physical behavior of displacement current it is the same as that of conduction current that means the it, it is it behaves in a similar way as a current behaves right the units to measure displacement current would be the same as that of conduction current all its physical behavior will be the same as that of conduction current the only difference is that Conduction current arises from moving charges and displacement current arises from changing electric field. Otherwise, they both behave as current. There is no difference as such. Now, when we talk about, but when we talk about static electric fields, static electric fields means the electric fields are static. They are not changing with time. So if the electric fields are not changing with time, in that case, displacement current will be equal to zero because displacement current arises only when electric field changes with time. So for time varying electric fields, for time varying electric fields, displacement current is non-zero. That means you have some value of displacement current. So there can be certain situations, there can be certain scenarios where you have only conduction current and there is no displacement current. For example, in this case, outside the plate of the capacitor, you have conduction current, but displacement current is zero. Similarly, if you look at the area in between the plates of the capacitor, your conduction current is zero, but you have displacement current. There can be certain scenarios where you have both conduction current as well as displacement current. In that, in those scenarios, the total current will be equal to IC plus ID. Right? So now, if you consider the modified law, that is the modified ampere Maxwell law, using that law, if you try to calculate the magnetic field at different point, at the same point of the capacitor, considering different amperian loop, you will get the same result. I mean, it will be consistent, right? So now let us look at the consequences of Maxwell, ampere Maxwell law. So now, as I mentioned before also, now if you look at these two setups, in the first setup, what is your magnetic field? So in the first setup, the magnetic field is given by integration of B dot DL is equal to mu naught I. Now here, what is mu naught I? Mu naught I is mu naught IC. Now in the second setup, this is the first setup. And what is the second setup? In the second setup, it is integration of B dot DL is equal to mu naught IC plus ID. So here IC is zero, but you have ID. So that means in this case, in both the cases, you will get some value of magnetic field. So your magnetic field in both the cases will be equal to mu naught IC divided by 2 pi R. Here it will be B is equal to mu naught ID divided by 2 pi R. So you get consistent values of magnetic field at the same point of a of the same setup even though you have considered different amperian loops. Now what will be the value of the conducting current and the displacement current? That depends upon the exact scenario. Right? Because the total current has to be the same. So if I say, let us suppose if I say that the total current outside should be equal to the total current inside, that means outside you have only conduction current. Inside you have only displacement current. So your conduction current and displacement current has to be the same because total current should remain the same, right? 
So now what was the final conclusion of this Ampere Maxwell law? That means the what did Ampere propose? I mean, what did Maxwell propose at the very beginning? Maxwell proposed that a time varying electric field should generate a magnetic field. And that is happening now. Because if you look at this example itself, what is happening? There is electric field between the plates. The electric field is varying with time. So because of this va time varying electric field, there is a displacement current. And because of this displacement current, you have this magnetic field. So that means a time varying electric field is generating a magnetic field. So that means the final conclusion is that a time varying electric field can generate a magnetic field. And a time varying magnetic field can also generate an electric field. So this was given by Faraday Lenz law. Similarly, this was given by Ampere Maxwell law. So the final conclusion is that if you have an electric field which is changing with time, it can generate a magnetic field. Similarly, if you have a magnetic field which is changing with time, it can generate an electric field. So now it has become a two-way process. Electric field generates magnetic field, magnetic field generates electric field, right? So this is the main concept or this is the baseline of electromagnetic waves. You will, now you will see that you will be able to understand the concept of electromagnetic waves very easily. So here I have just diagrammatically represented what I told just now. This diagram represents your Faraday Lenz law that is time varying magnetic field produces electric field. The other one shows that a time varying electric field that is the current because of the current which is flowing through the conductor is generating a magnetic field. Now what are Maxwell's equations? Now Maxwell contribu Maxwell's contribution to modify this Ampere circuital law became so significant that the set that a set of four equations which were all given by different different scientists came to be known as Maxwell's equations. Little surprising, right? But that is how it is. So the first equation is integration of E dot dS is equal to Q divided by epsilon naught. Familiar to this? Right. What is it? It is nothing but Gauss law in electrostatics. Gauss law in electrostatics. Now, there are, it, this has a counterpart in magnetism which said integration of D dot dS is equal to 0. And that was Gauss law in magnetism. So, the next equation was nothing but the Faraday Lenz law. Faraday Lenz law which stated that a changing of time varying magnetic field gives rise to electric field. So the Faraday Lenz law was expressed as integration of E dot dL is equal to minus d phi by dt. This phi is nothing but the magnetic flux changing with time. And what is this? This is nothing but the induced EMF because induced EMF is equal to electric field into the path traversed. Right? So you got first, second, third equation and the last but not the least equation was nothing but the Maxwell Ampere law that is integration of B dot dL is equal to mu naught IC plus mu naught epsilon naught d phi E by dt. So this was Ampere Maxwell law and this was Faraday Lenz law. These four laws were together known as Maxwell's equations because if you look at these four equations, they relate electricity and magnetism very closely to each other. The first equation talks about the surface integral of electric field. The second equation talks about the surface integral of magnetic field. The third equation talks about the line integral of electric field. The fourth equation again talks about the line integral of magnetic field. So you can see that they are all counterpart of each other and that is how it was seen that electric field and magnetic field are closely related to each other. This magnetic flux gave rise to electric field, here electric flux gave rise to magnetic field. 
Now in this, now these four equations related electricity and magnetism to each other and also it was experimentally found that this constants epsilon naught and mu naught, what are these constants? Epsilon naught is nothing but permittivity. I spoke about permittivity when I talked about the lessons on electricity. Similarly, what is mu naught? It is nothing but permeability. We talked about it in our magnetism lesson, right? Now, experimentally, it was found that C, that is the velocity of light, is equal to 1 by root over mu naught epsilon naught. So, this was an experimental finding. So that means we see that these Maxwell equations not only relates electricity and magnetism but it also relates ray optics that is light optics. So that means electricity, magnetism and optics they are all related to each other. They are all interrelated. So Maxwell's equations are very well known and they came to be known as Maxwell's equations because of Maxwell contribution in modifying the ampere circuit law. So and now we reach towards the end of the topic on Maxwell's work and Maxwell's equations. So what was the final conclusion? The final conclusion was that a changing electric field produces a magnetic field. Similarly, a changing magnetic field produces an electric field. Now based on this, we will now try to understand what are electromagnetic waves. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.